Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you again for joining us on our webinar today. Uh, my name is Stephen McClelland. I'm a digital strategist here at Profile Tree. And on today's webinar, we're going to be taking a look at from inbox to impact and crafting emails that convert with get response. So in today's session, we're going to take a look at email marketing as a whole. We're going to take a look at how you're using email marketing for your current business and also then looking at some tools. Mainly today, we're going to focus on a platform the Profile Tree have used, and that is called Get Response. But there's many other different platforms out there that you may already be using or familiar with, and you're going to be able to apply a lot of the same logic and learning experience that you'll have. Now, if you do have any questions in today's session, do please do use the chat feature. You can use the chat feature to leave any questions, and we'll have a bit of a QA session as we go. But mainly at the end of this video, we'll jump on and we'll get into those questions in more detail. So do feel free to engage with us below. So what I would like to do is just get started is a bit of an overview on exactly what we're going to cover in today's webinar. The purpose of this webinar, as I said, is really to focus around email marketing. So we're going to keep it quite clean, quite simple, um, and really focus on the key parameters that we want you to take away from today's call. So first of all, we will open with an email overview and just get into a look at email marketing overall. We'll then take a look at email marketing in review. So what is the latest with email marketing? Have you done it historically and have you kept it going? Or is it something you keep thinking about, keeps coming on your radar, and you've just never really get back into it? So we're going to take a real look at overall, how can you really efficiently use email marketing for your business? After that, we're actually going to then get in to get response. We're going to have a look at get response. Again, we'll be able to look at some comparisons against other platforms that you might be familiar with. But the idea is we're going to take a good look at get response, see how that platform works, and then start to see how we can look at its features. And then finally, we'll conclude with a bit of a practical demonstration where we'll actually get in to get response. We will have a look at their platform, have a look at some of their amazing features, and we'll close off with a little bit about AI in both get response, but also just general email marketing. How are you using AI moving forward for your email marketing? So really today is all about trying to establish a bit of a placeholder in email marketing, what we're trying to do, and hopefully get into the practical parts as quick as we can, because I know that's what everyone's really going to be focused on. But it is important to break it into a bit of an overview on email marketing. So my background is really around digital strategy. Um, my, my previous trade is a developer. Uh, and really what I was focused on when building websites is how are you generating those leads through your website? How are you thinking about collecting um, contact information? And so now we have lots of different opportunities through our websites. We have lead generation forms. And that might be a simple contact form or a send up your mailing list. For those that are thinking of e-commerce, it might be sign up to a promotion or a call to action to try and drive engagement. And again, for those that are using social media, you might want to be thinking about driving people to a landing page where you'll use those forms. So lots of these email marketing platforms from HubSpot, MailChimp, GetResponse, all have some form of form builder that will allow you to collect emails. But are you actually using email marketing? Is it something that's in your strategy? Is it in your plan? Are you tying email marketing into your digital strategy overall. And that's what I really want to try and focus on. I want you to try and think about for 2024 and your own strategy and how AI can have a big part to play there in helping you, whether it's your low on resources, you're stuck for ideas, or just quite simply, you haven't looked at it before. So we'll have a look at how AI can be used as well as just getting started with a new platform. But a couple of quick stats just as I open up the screen here. So what you'll see, first of all, is the current state of email marketing in 2024. Firstly, I can say that email marketing is not going anywhere. That's the first thing. Uh, there was for a while there, email marketing felt like it was on the downward spiral. Uh, even this year, actually, as the 1st of February, uh, Gmail and Yahoo are making some changes to how they authenticate emails. This is to do with some of the filtering. So you'll see some news on that really soon from a lot of these companies. In fact, when we do the demonstration later, you'll actually see a pop-up on GetResponse just talking about it. So there's some big changes coming their way for email marketing. Email providers like Gmail, Hotmail, um, Microsoft and other, other different platforms are making a lot of changes. They're there to try and protect the consumer. They're trying to help out people that we don't end up with emails just flooded with spam. So there's a lot of changes coming. But despite those changes, and even Apple in the last two years has made a lot of big changes on their emails, we still see an increase, which is great to see. So from 2022, so our stats yet aren't as updated for 2023, or sorry, 2020, yeah, 2023, what we're seeing is a big jump in the open rates and transaction rate or click-through rates. So as you'll see here on the right-hand side, I've taken a small screen grab from the GetResponse uh, blog on this where they did a whole benchmarking guide on all the different uh, statistics for 2022 and you'll see here that the average open rate within Europe is around 30 
30 uh, percent actually in the us which is one of the biggest we had seen as big of an increase is 36 percent so we're on year on year we're seeing as much as a two to five percent increase in email marketing and open rate and click-through rates going through so definitely massive potential to get back into email marketing if you were doing it before you were doing it historically and you haven't quite picked it up again as of recent Another thing then is emerging trends. So are you looking at what's going on in the world? And again, if you're attending this webinar today, you might already be looking at AI and you've seen this spiral of ChatGPT and Bard and all these different platforms. So um, are you really looking at those technologies? And again, I, I would say get response as a market leader in the AI game for email marketing. I think they've really led into AI. We're going to look at it in a bit more detail. And you'll really start to see how AI and email marketing are really combining to try and focus and make life a bit more streamlined, especially when it comes down to automation, integration with your different platforms, and then trying to uh, personalize and segment your audience. I think really what you'll see here is a moving trend in AI towards email marketing and how it can be up automated and adapted and some surprising factors too that I'll point out very soon. In terms of consumer behavior, again, we're starting to see a preference back to email communication over the likes of social media. So a big uh, jump there was obviously in social media marketing and people trying to put a lot more effort into one particular channel. Segmentation of your, your digital strategy is definitely something that we've seen coming in towards the late half of 2023 definitely is, is not disappearing for 2024. And that again is diversification of your channels. So you know, you're not just putting all your eggs in one basket with social media marketing or SEO. You're uh, having a, a bit of a, a synergy and you'll see they've used that in the next bullet point between your different strategies. So again, how do we get consumer behavior to be aware of what we're doing? You know, are we talking to them on Facebook? Are we promoting uh, an offer, a promotion for our service or our product? And then are we following that up in our email marketing strategy? And definitely, again, one of the big things that we see on the rise is that, that synergy, that connection between social media, your website, and your email marketing strategy as a whole. And how do you hook that together? And again, when we get starting to talk about get response features, you'll see how they can integrate with a lot of those platforms. And then, again, it's, I suppose it's really talking about the same point, but um, that impact on that digital strategy mix, how email marketing is now supporting SEO, which is often a surprising one, because when we talk about SEO, we talk about search engine optimization. What does Google see? Does Google see everything that you're posting? And when we think about emails, we think about something that's private, hidden behind closed doors. It's in your consumer's inbox. That's not getting seen by Google. In the reality, what we're seeing is email marketing is supporting SEO by getting traffic to click on an email notification, to go to your website to engage. We're starting to see that referral traffic, that activity on Google Analytics is starting to reward your site for an SEO perspective because it's that referral traffic that's getting engagement. Google's then enjoying that and seeing that engagement and it's starting to bump you up the rankings based on the, the actual interaction that someone has with your site. So there is a massive connection between search engine optimization and email marketing and how you effectively use that to get footfall onto your website from your emails. So that's just a bit of an overview on kind of what we're looking at with email marketing, what we've seen. Again, big shift towards AI, big update in terms of email marketing as a whole for 2023 and trying to see how does that continue into 2024. But most importantly, and the big thing that I would take away, if you're thinking about email marketing, if you've joined today's webinar and it's something that you've been thinking about and not really dived into, start today. Like, there's no reason why you can't. There's a lot of platforms, get response included, that have free trials for 30 days. There's platforms that allow you to have free membership for up to a certain amount of contacts. My suggestion to you is if you're not doing email marketing at the moment and you're not even thinking about it, well, firstly, start thinking about it, get it on your list. But number one, sign up to an account. Again, get response, have a demo on their website. We'll, we'll do a few call to actions towards the end of this video today. Um, but even MailChimp, for example, have up to a thousand contacts for free. And you can use that just to try and start to build a bit of a lead base. Once you start to build the leads, you start to get contacts into it. Then you can start to put out some what we would call floater emails to try and see, get a sense check on what's your open rate look like, what's your average click through, and are you getting much engagement through that? So again, lots of opportunities in the email marketing space for 2024 and why you should be thinking about it. If we look at the different types of emails that were coming out in 2022, so between that kind of timeline, what we were seeing is the majority of those emails were actually RSS feeds. So for those that aren't familiar, and I'll not be overly technical about this, RSS feeds are effectively an automated uh, blog or a link to a some form of content feed. If you're a blogger or if you're writing a lot of content like a newsletter, you can often set up an RSS feed with your website and your email marketing software to effectively have a connection. So every time you write a new blog, an email gets sent and that allows your contributors or your subscribers to stay along with what you're doing. And you'll see here some of the stats 
for 2022 into 2023 from GetResponse was that they had seen the highest open rate on RSS feeds. So consumers are wanting to see what you do. They want to stay in touch with your business, whether you're in a finance, consultancy, hospitality, tourism, whatever the sector, there seems to be an engagement that your audience wants to see what you're doing. They want to know more. Our audiences, our consumers are more knowledgeable than they've ever been before. Product research, online YouTube reviews, product reviews, service reviews are all becoming a massive part of how we operate as a business or as an online organization. So no matter what sector or industry you're in, we would strongly advise you to be looking at how you engage with your audience, not just about always pushing a sale, but actually pushing your service, pushing your mission, your core values, and how you get that across to the business. Outside of that then, we'd also seen emails around triggered emails. So triggered emails would be some form of trigger response. For example, for those that are using e-commerce, when someone purchases a product, you might have a triggered email go back to say thank you for your purchase, here's an offer for another purchase, or even if you sign up to an email newsletter, here is an incentive to click and book a call or again to get a percentage of a product. So those are triggered emails. Then we have autoresponders, very similar to triggered emails, but autoresponders are all about follow-ups. So if you're following up and we do what's called a thing called email nurturing. So email nurturing is where you don't just send one email and then that's a done if they don't respond. You might send three or four emails, you nurture in the client, you're gonna give them a soft welcome in. Autoresponders can be used if someone replies to those, they immediately get put down a funnel and that's where that funnel comes in for autoresponders. So once again, 30% on average open rate around those. And then finally, we have newsletters. Newsletters were quite often the lowest open rate, but what we had found here was newsletters very quickly became um, duplicated, redundant, and a lot of people, what they were doing with their newsletters is subject line would have been newsletter, it would have been very, very top level, and they wouldn't have put a lot of detail into it. Now, the big thing to note here, though, is newsletters had a very high, or normally, um, normally decent click-through rate. So people actually going on to the newsletter, clicking in to see what the updates were. So again, some interesting notes around the different types of emails. And then when it comes to video, so obviously I've already mentioned how important video can be when it comes to engaging your audience through email marketing. Naturally, email marketing for a long time has been something that sits in your inbox. It's something that you try and drag attention to. You do things with the subject line. You try to personalize the receipt email. And one of the big things that we're seeing arise in is putting video simply into the email itself, especially into that above the fold section. So if someone opens your email, the first thing you want them to see is that video engagement going through. And, and interestingly enough, we've seen Vimeo lead the way in terms of the open rate going through. Uh, the reason for Vimeo and the most common reason for this is privacy. So a lot of people are using Vimeo to have private videos that they can share with the business. Maybe it's a one-to-one -one or a personalized video. They naturally don't want that going on to YouTube. They don't want that to be in public. And so what they do is they would put it onto Vimeo, have the privacy settings set so the only person opening the link can access it. And then from there, they get through. Uh, the, again, big thing to note with the likes of video was the engagement rate afterwards. So having that engagement rate coming through, although you'll not see engagement rate on the screen, what we were finding is that when people were watching videos, they were much more engaged and more likely to get that personal connection. Especially if the video is something like even what we're doing today, which is that type of face to the camera where there's someone talking and engaging. Building that personal relationship can make a massive difference in terms of getting into someone's inbox and getting engagement from the email itself. So again, lots of ideas around email marketing as a whole as an overview over 2022 and 2023 and how that blends into your strategy for 2024. So what we want you to be thinking about is how are you using, just to flick back, how are you using different types of emails? Are you sending, oh, sorry, too far forward. Are you sending the likes of autoresponders, triggered emails? Are you looking at the different types of media that you're using? So even thinking about the likes of downloadable documents, attachments to those emails. Are you trying to engage your audience? So it's trying to think of use cases that you're trying to bring to today's scenario in order to help your business and understand how you move forward from there. And then what I wanted to do before we get into the practical demo is to look at get response. So how does get response come to email marketing and what is get response, I suppose is the first question that some of you might ask. So just like a lot of email marketing platforms, get response is made simply for email automation and setup. Get response is an intuitive email marketing platform that allows you of any skill level, be a complete novice and someone who's never ventured into email marketing or someone who's an experienced a digital marketer with many years experience, it is going to allow you to create emails very simply using a series of templates and guides. It's going to allow you to set up sequencing or lists so to be able to kind of collate or group uh, client lists together. 
And then from there, it's going to take a look at how you can automate or improve that service through the use of AI. And this is the big area that I see Get response or making waves in and that's their ai email generator and we're going to go into that hopefully today in, in the session we're going to take a look more at what get response are actually doing in the ai space so if we look at their features overall number one as i said is email creation and templates and um, get response have a fantastic library of assets design tools drag and drop builders so effectively a codeless uh, environment so you don't need to be worrying about having the code or turning the developer to build a lot of the email marketing craft so a big part behind this is how versatile, how robust their email marketing platform is to adapt for design and also your skill set or your level that you feel confident with. From there then, automation and autoresponders. So a lot when we talk about AI, automation, autoresponders, you might panic, get flustered a wee bit thinking of large diagrams, processes, um, lots of um, moving parts. Well actually get response to a really good job of you know, fine tuning that, making it very easy to manage and easy to get your hands to. So what, again, really we want to focus on is how we can make that a little bit more easier for yourself and how we can obviously engage with the capabilities simply that they have for automation and autoresponders. From there then we have advanced analytics. So how to dive into reports. They've recently at GetResponse just released a new feature for custom reports. And those custom reports are going to allow you to create, um, well, I suppose custom reports, they allow you to create detailed reporting on your exact needs. So if you're an e-commerce space and you only need to see your products that are getting the most engagement or which products are getting the most traction, you can create a custom report specific for those needs rather than going through mindless dashboards. So that's just one fe feature that they're rolling out even on a regular basis. But for those that are just looking at general reporting, general analytics, you'll definitely be able to get that through get response. Things that you've already seen on screen from before. Open rate, click through rate, which email is doing the best, which campaign is performing, uh, and which campaign, for instance, maybe is underperforming and uh, needs a bit of optimization or needs a bit of work. From there then, uh, self-explanatory enough, we have list management and segmentation. So list management, segmentation is all about how we group our audiences. So again, if you think back to that website form that I mentioned at the start of this call, one of the things we want to be looking at is how are we starting to collect that audience? Do we have a, a form on our website which is specific to newsletter? And if so, are we segmenting that audience so that these individuals are interested in the newsletter and they're interested in staying up to date with what we're doing? So going back to the types of email we're sending, are we hitting those people with the right type of email? And then do we segment the audience that are interested in the promotion? Those that are commercially focused and they're looking for a deal or an incentive? Are we splitting those audiences? And that is something that you really should think about because you have different mindsets of your different target audience. Again, if you have someone who's looking very commercially focused and you're gonna start hitting them with a lot of informational blog content, it may or may not work. And it's a risk that you take is that they're clearly commercially viable or they're interested in trying to get an offer or promotion. So how can you start to apply that to uh, your strategy overall? And then when we take a look at the likes of uh, segmentation, sorry, list management then. So it's again the flip of that. So how are we trying to group lists together? Are we creating different lists for various campaign types? Are we doing seasonal campaigns, be it Christmas, um, Easter, Halloween? Is there different things going on throughout the year that we want to try and list certain individuals or certain groups or categories of people into that platform? And then finally, integrations. It's important that any system that we use, we're not having to go for a CRM system over here, email marketing down here, website builder over here, word processing document down here in the corner, and then another design tool over here. It just gets messy and you end up you know, having logins for all these different platforms. You end up forgetting things with all these different platforms and one thing just rolls into another. So with GetResponse, it's important that you're looking at those integrations between the likes of your website platform. So if you're using something like WordPress or Shopify, can you integrate GetResponse with those? But you can. And then taking it a step further is your CRM. So are you using a custom relationship management tool? So a customer relationship manager tool that will also allow you to integrate your leads and your lists from that platform in to get response and how you connect those dots together. So really important that you take all that on board. From there then we want to take a look at just the benefits of what Get Response is going to provide. Now I know there's some questions coming in that I see already about you know, what's the difference between Get Response and MailChimp and we'll go into that too. But some of the leading benefits for Get Response over some of the those platforms that I mentioned. Number one would be AI driven email optimization. So again, as I mentioned, Get Response is really pushing the AI game at the moment. You'll see I've just flicked up on the screen there at the Get Response dashboard. This is one of their demos. Uh, so you'll see there's no data on at the moment, but one of the big things that they're looking at is the AI campaigns, the ability to 
effectively create an entire email campaign using AI. We're going to hopefully get into that in today's webinar and we're going to take a look at how you can develop out that campaign simply by using Get Response. So a big part of that is the AI process. Not only is it going to take a load off a wee bit when it comes to the technical requirements, but it's also going to take a look at how you can improve email marketing, how you can uh, engage the audience at the right time of the day. It's really going to actually learn from the stats. It's going to use predictive analysis, which you'll see here, and it's going to look at improving how do we get efficient. So are we sending emails at a, a various time zone? Do we have most of our audiences clearly engaged opening our emails on a weekend um, when they get out of work? Or are they waiting uh, until lunchtime while they're in work and then they open their emails? No, it's going to use AI to predict when is the best time to hit those email marketing campaigns, to get those emails out and to get it on, on in front of people. But not even just as a predictive analysis, as I've already said, it's even the creation, it's setting things up for those that are a novice and not really sure where to start. It's the perfect combination. We will take a look at ChatGPT and how you can use AI from a, a third party, so to speak, with the likes of um, email marketing. So no matter what platform you're using, how can we try and use some of these AI tools to integrate better? From there, automation and personalization, I've already mentioned, so I'll not go into that in, in too much detail, but it is effectively trying to look at how do we personalize our emails to make that more personal connection with our audience, with our consumers, to engage them and obviously work on their customer behavior. From there then we want to look at conversion tools, so again back that integration of different platforms and different process and methods you'll see even the likes of our webinar software we use called Hey Summit is able to interact with a lot of these platforms and list in our subscribers that sign up. Then finally and naturally we have e-commerce that I mentioned already again and it's a really suitable tool for connecting that full e-commerce experience. And so we're looking at every part of that customer journey there, from the order receipt email to the abandoned cart tracking. So if someone again has went on to our website, they've went to make a purchase, got right to the checkout, uh, typed in their details and then can, or didn't commit, should I say, uh, didn't put any payment down, we'll be able to put them back into our email marketing campaign. We'll be able to segment those off into a, se a separate list and then target them with a, a set campaign, a set routine to try and get them back into our basket, back into our consumer list and then purchase through as a customer. So it's looking at that entire process, trying to recover that sales process, that sales journey as much as possible, and then engage with our audience through the most efficient method that we can. So again, lots of opportunities, lots of benefits around Get Response and what it can deliver. So what I would like to do now, just as I, I see a few questions coming in, and we will again come back to those towards the end, I do want to take the time now to jump into Get Response. And at this stage, we're gonna have a look at a bit of a demo hopefully going to try and do this on the fly so everything works as we'd expect. But again, if you do have any questions on anything that you've discussed so far, be that get response, email marketing in general, or just general questions about email marketing, don't uh, hesitate to contact us below. So get response, as I mentioned, already has a trial facility you can use, so don't be afraid to help we play around with that. If you are interested in Get response more do feel free to reach out to profile free directly you can contact us on our own website or as i mentioned in the chat facility on the webinar today you can also engage with us there too for any questions that you might have around get response but as i mentioned there is a free trial so i'd really encourage you to sign up to it at least to have a look at the platform and give you a bit more feel for what's there so just as we take a look then at get response and we have we run through their dashboard i just thought i'd start off with a bit of an overview uh, for those that are familiar with email marketing or used various tools in the past. So when we look at the dashboard, this will start to be more customized towards you through the use of these widgets. These widgets can be customized and you can start to add in details around tracking, reporting, your website page, your forms, your campaigns. So they are quite customized. The dashboard allows you to build a bespoke platform for your needs and they use widgets as a way of customizing that based on what you're interested in. Again, back to those solutions and scenarios I mentioned just before, if it's e-commerce related or if you're focused on lead generation, you might want to obviously filter that list for you. From here though, you'll start to see different ideas from quick actions, newsletter, and then tricks and tips. And again, all of this can be moved around, dragged and dropped, or even removed from the dashboard. If we take a look at the top left then, you'll start to go into tools. Tools is an area where you'll see if I move our recording software out of the way, you'll start to see here, we have different features available. So for example, the AI campaigns, we're gonna take a look at that in just a moment. We have contacts, automation, email marketing, SMS, web push notifications, and, and many, many more. I'll not uh, bore you to death by going through them all now. So again, do encourage you to have a look at some of those platforms. 
with the likes of Get Response, so their main focus or your main area of target is going to be the top four, which is AI campaigns, contacts, automation, and email marketing. Again, there's features for the likes of text-based notifications, so SMS, letting people know that you've got a new service, you've got a new products, a new offering, and then hit them with a text-based message as well. That's something you can do. But most importantly, what we want to be looking at is the list feature and the email marketing, and then we'll have a wee look at the automation AI campaigns. So if we start off with contacts, normally the first place that we start with, with any client, and again, this is just a demo account, just for the purpose of this webinar, but you'll get an idea for how easy it is to create lists, create segmentation, run reports, and even looks at the likes of general reporting. So do you have a list that's notoriously bad for bounce rate or for spam emails? And you can have a look at how clean uh, that, that inbox is. What about suppression email lists where there's emails clearly getting bounced or blocked by the sender uh, or blocked by the incoming? So there's, again, lots of different ways you can look at how you um, look at your contacts really on get response. But creating a list is really simple. All we're going to do is go to list here along the top. We're going to go to create list and that will allow us to give that a name. So we can call this profile tree webinar. We can create that webinar list. And what you'll see here is it just very simply creates a list for us. At this stage then we can start to add contacts. So again, if you have a contact list already, so let's say for example, you'd already been collecting leads through get response, then what that would allow you to do here is to add a condition. Now that condition would allow you to set parameters. So effectively, if you were asking someone through a contact form, what's their home address or what county they're in? Well, what you could do is you can match that up here and you can say that anyone that's in a particular postal code, so BT, and you can put that in or anyone that's in Ireland, you can put that in. So there's lots of different ways and conditions you can set up to group audiences together or create lists. So as I mentioned earlier, it's not just about those commercial versus informational style segmentation groups. It's all the different methods and means that you can use uh, from what you can see here. So lots and lots of features, even from where they came from, the source, if someone has come from a website versus social media, you can group those all into lists. When it comes to adding contacts, again, really simple. There's lots of ways you can do this. First of all, you can add them one by one. So if you want to just type in manually their name, their email address, and any other relevant information you have, you're welcome to do that. You can add them from a file. So for those that are familiar with the likes of a CSV file or an XML file, you can upload those into the website and map them to. So if you wanted to move from the likes of MailChimp, but you just need to be careful about GDPR compliance and how you're handling confidential or customer information, you can move that data as well and you can put those into various file formats. From there then you can map the fields. So if you have an Excel sheet and you have all the names, uh, first name, last name, address, email address, phone number, you can then map those to get response. So get response will know exactly what's the email address, what's the phone number, what's the home address and how that gets set up through the platform. We then have integrations. As I mentioned before, there is a plethora of information or integrations for different platforms from the likes of your website builders, so Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce. Then you've got some of your other platforms like of Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, MetaSuite as a whole. So you're able to integrate with a lot of those different integrations and platforms to connect your list. And then finally, I'll open it up just to show you, we then have the sign up forms. And this is where I mentioned before, very similarly to the likes of other email marketing platforms like HubSpot and MailChimp. And um, GetResponse also has the ability to create a form. Their form is quite a simple tool. It allows you to set up different scenarios. So in this scenario here, we can create a very easy pop-up form or a slide-up form and then embed it into our website. What this would allow us to do is choose which option we want. So do we want it as a pop-up or embedded? So just as a frame into a page, we'll choose pop-up just for this training scenario. In here, then we get a list of templates that we can use. So we can have a look at which one uh, meets our needs. So if we're gonna do a webinar, we might want to have some form of countdown or something that's more focused. So let's have a look at this one here. So we've got some form of countdown. So let's hit use template. At this stage then, you will have potentially some form of branding guidelines you might want to follow, but you'll see very simple here. So uh, this is where you'll now judge my creativity. Webinar coming soon. You can put in some wee timers there, change the details for all that you need to do, put in a bit more information, change the call to action, link it to a page, or if you wanted to, we can actually use in some features for adding so we have a look at this and just to see if we go to the plus button and we can add in then a sign up form so very quickly we can start adding details for the likes of capturing so if we just delete that call to action so you can see here how we can start to use this as a lead generation tool to capture a name and an email address 
So that's just one quick scenario, one quick example of how um, the contact list can be used or how forms can be used to build up a lead base. Again, I could spend more time on going through this, changing colors, changing pictures, adding images, uh, and obviously customizing it. But again, it's just one example of how easy get response is to just get started. And that goes back to what I was saying when we talked about email marketing in 2024. If you're watching this webinar today and you haven't went and signed up to something like GetResponse or MailChimp, get, go and get that done first. That's your first thing you have to do is you know, get onto those platforms. From there then, it's looking at your strategy and what you do next. So that was the context, so very simple as you see. And um, what we'll do next then is we will have a look at the email marketing facility and how easy is it to build an email marketing campaign. So in looking at our email marketing then, what we want to see here is the get response facilities. What can we actually do with the platform in terms of drafting email campaigns, drafting newsletters, or even simply creating A-B tests or templates. So with GetResponse, what we can do here then is when we go to email marketing through our demo account, we can go over here and we can create a newsletter. We can go in and set up new templates. So what that would allow us to do is create a usable template that's brand led or brand focused. Or what we can also do is set up some feeds. I mentioned earlier in our webinar how we can use RSS feeds for sharing content. So if we're using, for example, a WordPress website, WordPress by default will have an RSS feed feature that you can, you can actually combine and add to your post facility. So every time you post a new blog or a post on your WordPress site, that will create an RSS feed that you can then recycle out through your content. Again, get response, make that really easy to integrate with those platforms and be able to start to have a little bit more of an automated system at hand. For the purpose of this webinar, we'll focus on creating a newsletter and that will allow you to just see the style and how the builder works. So we're just going to start by going to create newsletter. From here, then we can start to do something by yourself. This will be very familiar for those that have used the likes of Canva or MailChimp in the past, where it's that type of drag and drop builder. However, as we mentioned already, with the new AI features coming in, well, what we can now do is start to use some of GetResponse's amazing AI features. So example here, what is your email about? Well, we're going to say we want to promote our uh, webinar for digital marketing services in AI or around or using AI, something along those lines, sorry, was using AI. Uh, what kind of business do you have? We'll say we're a digital marketing agency. And if we hopefully get something that comes up, so marketing agency is fine, more settings. Who is this email for? So we're email, this is really for, um, let's say new business owners. Oh, new business owners. Marketing managers, marketing managers, and freelancers. So kind of just trying to arrange this for various different people. What kind of email? It is a announcement or a welcome email. Again, there's different types that we could do. So we can say it's an announcement email. We want to hit next. And how do you want it to sound? So this is going to start to use the tone setting. So how is the tone of the email formatted? So we want to have a look at a maybe formal tone just to have something a bit more serious or maybe informative, let's stay with that. We can then choose a design. So we're definitely gonna go with some form of design. So let's say one column layout. We want it to be modern. Again, if we wanted to, we wanted to upload our logo and brand palettes, we could do that. For now, again, we'll just keep it quite simple. So we'll go modern. And uh, we'll not upload a logo at the moment, but here you can see you can upload that if you wish. And um, we're just gonna then hit on generate. Now, based on the prompt that you put in, um, Get Response AI will start to put together a potential layout. The idea here, and the way I would say with most AI tools, is you want to use these platforms as a bit of a blank canvas filler. You now, it fills in that blank canvas when we get started with a lot of these things. When we talk about ChatGPT, uh, in, in those sessions, we normally look at ChatGPT and these AI tools being used as a way of filling in the gaps. And that's exactly what we want to use for Get Response. Nine out of 10 times, it's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be exactly what you need. But if you think about having that blank canvas in your mind going, where do I get started? I need to do email marketing. I can see it's something I've been trying to do. Well, here's a great way of just getting started. So elevate your brand with more innovative marketing solutions. And then you'll see here, it starts to go in a profile tree. So, and this is the idea with this. So if we just look at the top, work your way down, you'll see Get Response uses a drag and drop builder, first of all. So for those that are familiar with some website builders, this might be, a wee bit familiar. Under each section, you've got these different space elements. You've got the text element, and you can again move that up or down just by clicking and dragging on the move tool. We then have the ability for all these small sections like spacers, and we can add those ourselves as well. So if we just move those into position. 
And what we can also do is add different elements. So I'm just gonna move our editing tool out of the way. So we start with say the text, for example, we just need to left click on the text tool. We'll see we have options at the top between font size, font formatting, different types of alignment settings. And from here, we can put in um, anything that we want. So we can say hello. If we want to add a level of personalization, well, we can also add in a personalization option. So this would allow us to say name, for example. And this goes back to those lists and the contact information that we collected before. Everything that goes in to get response is stored as a property, otherwise known as a variable. And we can use that variable for whatever purposes we want. So if we wanted this newsletter to say, hi, Stephen, I just want to welcome you to our new event, then you could do that through this facility here. And that would allow you then to make a bit more personalization efforts in your newsletters or in your email marketing campaigns. And you'll see here it's placeholder with that first name in brackets. But the idea is that's going to give you a bit of a space for that to put in place. From there, then we can go in and we can see this section here. Hello there, we're looking to elevate. At this stage, we can then use the AI tool. So on the right hand side, just to see the magic wand. If we click on the AI tool, you can see here, we can shorten, lengthen, change the tone, or even define your own prompt. What I would also suggest that you do is make use of ChatGPT. So as you'll see here, I have ChatGPT open in a second window. And I can say here that we are looking to promote um, our online webinar. Um, we want, want to run an email campaign for our existing clients to invite them. Can you provide some content for the body of this email? Something really simple. Again, um, the more content, the more effort you put into the prompt, the more you're gonna get back. So this is just a quick filler. So you'll see here, we can put in some of this information directly in to get response. And it just shows you how you can amalgamate AI tools. And you'll see that for those that attended our earlier webinar on AI strategy, the idea behind that was how can you amalgamate different AI tools together, not just using one platform, but actually using a series of different platforms. So we can take that content, we can put it into place. So obviously for those who have tried pasting um, from ChatGPT, sometimes you'll have a wee bit of difficulty at times with it. And you might need to make a few adjustments taking out, changing font and colors, things like that. So you can do all your adjustments, get things tidy, spend a bit of time with it. You can also add in new sections. So if we go to our section here, hit back, you'll see we have blocks. And again, for those that are familiar with the likes of Canva and MailChimp, you'll be very familiar with this. The idea we can click and drag and drop in, say a video, and then we can paste in a Vimeo or a YouTube link, and that will have our video displaying in here. We can then start to delete sections if we wanted to delete sections completely from our email and fine tune. So you'll see it's very easy to customize, get started very quickly, change colors, play around with different designs, style and tabs. Oh, that's a bit bright. Um, and really just get an overall feel for how easy it is to create the experience. For those that again are not creative, I put myself in that space sometimes, um, then that's where the AI tool comes in. You can easily go into this, hit it, add in a new section and ask AI to fill in the gap. From there then though, what we want to do is first of all, test and preview. So allowing us to send a test message, we can put in an email address of our choice. If I just put in my own email there, so stephen at profiletree.com, I can send an email and see how that looks. Now there might be some difficulty with receiving that just in through testing and just check your spam, but at least it gives you an idea. Likewise, we can also inbox preview it. This is a feature that get responsive developed and this allows you to see how that email is gonna look. Now at the moment, I don't believe I've actually done a subject line. So we're probably not gonna get too much information there. But when you start to add things like subject line and, and adding in more detail, then you'll start to get how that's going to look and make sure you can check that. Likewise, there's also more advanced features for those type of spam protection and filtering. So lots of features there from Get Responses point of view. When we hit next, however, this will then allow us to set up the actual email marketing setup. Now from here, the AI that Get Response builds in doesn't stop, it continues on. So even in the subject line, it knows that we're talking about marketing solutions. It knows that we're talking about um, a webinar of some description. So the subject line was carried across too. So at this stage, we can change our accounts. If we needed to add a new account, we can go into our settings and add an email address. There you'll see that point that I made earlier about how Yahoo and Gmail are changing some of their verification settings and then you can change who it's from, who it's going to. So lots of different settings. At this stage then, you can also look at the likes of the subject line where you can start to make some adjustments here. Now, one interesting thing is the use of emojis. And I see that was one of the questions that I was asked earlier. Can you use emojis in email marketing? Well, the answer is yes, you can. However, when it comes to statistics, get response, we're able to see 
that in terms of engagement, we're not actually seeing an increase in the statistics there. And we're actually seeing it's the opposite. We see 8% more open rates on uh, an email subject line without an emoji versus with an emoji. And I think there's a variety of reasons for that. I think one of the most common ways is sometimes emojis actually are starting to look a bit spammy. When you see an emoji subject line with lots of lightning bolts or you see dollar signs or different emoji faces, you, you often kind of know straight away it's a sales email coming in or it's a marketing email and you kind of almost you know, ignore it. You see it coming in, you go, ah, no, that's uh, it's a bit spammy. Uh, and so we're actually finding that although it's close, although it's only an 8% difference, so not massive in the scale of things, uh, still um, we are seeing more and better conversion rates on emails without emojis. But that being said, tools like ChatGPT, other platforms will of course give you a subject line and sometimes give you some suggestions around it. So you're always welcome to kind of take those platforms and pop those in. Likewise, um, Get Response will also give you a few pointers on the likes of the character limit, as well as that you can also then add in preview text. So for those that use the likes of Gmail and Outlook, you will notice that when an email lands in your inbox, you get not only the subject line, but the first couple of lines. Now you need to be compliant here, but what this allows you to do is effectively do a summary of what is in this email. Think of it like the SEO of your inbox. You are effectively trying to update that meta description, that short description to get clicks. You want people to click on that website link. I.e. in this scenario, you want people to click on that email and open up the full breadth of the email just based on the subject line and the preview alone. So really important that you make the subject line directly relating to the individual. Personality at this point can be added. So just as you've seen before, get response use the same icon for personalization. So if you wanted to you know, address the individual and make it more personalized, you can. This is something that's completely subjective at the moment. There's I suppose it's a bit of a hit and miss scenario. Do you go full personalization, have everything said, hi Stephen, we're doing this, this is our offer, hi Stephen, you're missed this promo, uh, versus a very simple um, standardized title. Again, really it's up to yourself and it's gonna be up to the report that you get. So if you start to see that your personalized emails are getting much more engagement, more open rate, more click-throughs, then certainly keep that engagement. But at least from a subject line point of view, the statistics are shown at the moment is there's not much of a difference between personalizing, which was surprising in my mind. I assumed that personalization, especially subject lines and emails, would have been the biggest thing or one of the biggest things that changed for 2024. It just hasn't been the case that we've seen. As you then go through then, you have the likes of the receipt email. So from there, who's gonna receive this email? At this stage, you can then start to add in individual receipts. So if you wanted to add in an individual contact, but most importantly, what you're going to do with this is you're gonna add in a list or a segmented audience. So just as we mentioned previously, you're gonna create a list. That list might be a webinar list that you've grouped together. It might be warm leads. It might be people that have just signed up for information and you're gonna group them into that segment or into that list. Based on get response, you're then gonna tab that list, hit add, and it's gonna have everyone that's in those lists to receive this email. Again, if there's any contacts that are excluded for whatever reason, it will tell you and give you information about that and what the purpose is. From here then, you've got the design. So once again, you can edit the message, you can edit the design, you can test it, and you can do a lot of those elements just to check and see how things are performing. And then finally, you've got a few advanced settings and these allow you to have more advanced tracking. So the first one is basic click tracking. So naturally get responsible, track all of their email marketing by default. And that will include basic things like open view times, scroll rates, you'll be able to see how far down someone scrolls. They'll even go into click depth. So how far are people clicking? Did they click a particular link? If you added multiple calls to action or links to blogs, links to products, it will track those too. Then we have e-commerce tracking and e-commerce tracking is notably for the likes of WooCommerce and Shopify. This allows you to track the workflow. So if someone's looking through that purchase process and they are looking to recover an abandoned cart product or they're looking to simply add something to the basket, you can engage that e-commerce tracking. That then funnels into Google Analytics. So for those of you that are using analytics and you want to know your resource, where your traffic's coming from, using a UTM, uh, which is a unique tracking metric, what you can then do is track that back through Google Analytics. So nine out of 10 times, you look at your analytics and you can see direct, organic, referral, and you're sometimes going, well, email marketing's definitely there, I just don't know which one it is. The reason for this is because of Google Analytics 4 and GA4, Google has changed their privacy compliance and what they're actually allowed to track. And that's why now we use a thing called the UTM to confer where it actually came from. So to be able to do that, you can track the links and you can integrate it with your Google Analytics account. There is a little bit of configuration that you need to do, 
but it's something that's worthwhile if you want to get true metric reporting back without just using Git Response's own dashboard. Then finally, we have the send settings. Now at this stage, you have the ability to send immediately and just send it right now. We can schedule it for later and we can choose the date and time, or we can also use the feature called perfect timing. This is the AI feature again that I mentioned before when it came to the features. At this stage, what will happen is Git Response will understand each individual context's own um, his historical context. If they open emails at two in the morning, it will hit that individual at two in the morning. And likewise, if it's a group of people opened it at the same time, it will hit them at the same time. So it's referred to as perfect timing. And it's that idea of trying to hit them at the best time it's convenient. Obviously, over time, this will build up its own data and its own understanding. So it's something just to consider when it comes to the setup. But for now, we're going to save this as draft since it is only a demo. And we'll go back to our newsletter stroke email marketing section. So hopefully all straightforward, you can see how easy it is to start to craft content. If you start to think about the bigger picture, this is where the likes of ChatGPT and other AI tools can be used uh, in a bit of a combination platform, be able to kind of jump into ChatGPT, get a bit of content from ChatGPT, and then add that into GetResponse's own AI and create almost the perfect email for your needs. From there then, and finally, we can go back to our tools and we will look at the campaigns and automation within Git Response. So the first thing we want to look at is the AI campaigns. This is one of the biggest promoted features for Git Response. They're really pushing the AI. And even in the short space of time that we at Profile Tree have been using and partnered with Git Response, one of the things that we've seen is how much they're investing their time and resources into developing this even further. So what we can do with the AI campaigns is we can start by creating a campaign by clicking on the button below. We can get call this, let's go for something different. And let's keep it the same just so it's consistent. So we'll just call this digital webinar 2024. You can link it to a list. So we'll just call this the proprietary webinar that we created earlier and we'll click on next step. From here, then it's gonna ask you to talk about your product or service highlights just for efficiency and also to, to cheat a wee bit. Um, we're gonna ask ChatGPT to give us what those services would be. Can you give me a list of services to promote in a webinar as an agency? ChatGPT, of course, as ever, is going to go off and give me a book size response, so probably could have typed in something myself. Um, but yeah, we'll just for quick and ease of use. So product or service highlights for the webinar, so it will be a webinar series across various days. This will promote oh, key. It's always good when you have to do these things on the fly and on these webinars. So this will promote key aspects of digital marketing, including, and then again, we can go into a few details about digital marketing. We can do things like SEO, content marketing, web design development, website design, development, email marketing, can't be forgetting the important ones, uh, and then even do things like video marketing. What field do you work in? Again, we can say we're a digital marketing agency or digital agency. What would you like to reach? And again, you go back. So you'll see it's very similar to what we did before. So marketing agency, who would you like to reach? Uh, new business owners, uh, freelancers, and digital marketers. Uh, what's your company or product name? So it's profile tree, oh, move that space. And then how should your communication sound? So let's say informative. And again, we're gonna hit next. So you'll start to see how it's very similar to what we did before. We've got a very similar kind of setup and tone. So again, we can go through, upload the logo, change the type of look we want to feel. And overall, what the AI campaign will do is actually set up a series of emails. First of all, it creates a landing page. So this will allow you to direct people to a webinar set up and the idea here is you're going to start to collect information through the landing page so you can post this on social media you can run it across linkedin and say we're promoting a webinar direct people to this page once they then sign up on the landing page you're then going to hit them immediately with an ai welcome email sorry well not ai but a welcome email and that's going to be obviously drafted by ai and the idea behind that is you're going to start to nurture that email in and from there you're then going to subscribe them to your newsletter and you'll see automatically AI has created that process. It started to look at the steps needed to do um, a webinar and what we can do then is start to review those requirements. 
Nine, nine out of ten times, at least at the moment, get response will craft a three series uh, email spread. So the idea behind this, it sets up a landing page style website. You can upload your logo, change in links, add in the requirements that you need, even start to link it out to other website platforms, other services. But naturally, it is what it says on the tin, and that is an AI website landing page builder. So it's going to be able to put that together. You can obviously preview it on different devices between desktop and mobile. Start to see how it looks, make your changes as you need to. But again, going back to the key requirement, it's getting that blank canvas done. At this stage, you'll see there's still room for improvement. There's still things that I will need to do naturally. But that idea of, I need to do email marketing. I don't know where to start. What do I do? Well, this is clearly uh, the best setup for you. It's got all the settings for your website, your subscriber list, your double opt-ins for your GDPR compliance, cookie banners, uh, favicons, analytics, business information, all really catered for you within the AI tools. So as you set up your GetResponse account, this all starts to come into that platform. What it also will do then is look at automation. Now you'll see as we start to look on automation, and just for those that wanted to follow along, it also is across the top because one of the key things that they're reporting on automation, which again, you'll see on the left hand side, automation in most platforms. When we talk about workflows and sequences, be it a CRM you're using or another email marketing platform can be quite overwhelming at times. And that is something to consider is, you know, email marketing should not be a manual go in, send an email, come back, do it again next month. What you want to be doing is looking at your process, looking at how you improve. So if we stay on the same example of a webinar, you'll see how the AI was able to craft that ideal process, which was lead generated. So if you think of that process, how would you map it out for your business? So if you're selling a product, first of all, stage one is, how are you getting the lead? Are you getting them from organic, like Google search? Are they coming to your website to browse a product? Are they adding that product to the basket and then you're collecting their data there? Or are you asking them to sign up for a promotion? Likewise, are you trying to run a service, are you offering a consultancy business? Are you offering tours of your accommodation? Do you want people to arrive on site? And so there's different ways you need to think about how you're collecting that. Are you gonna post things on social media? So the first stage is collecting the lead. Second stage then is welcoming or onboarding, and that's trying to really hook that lead, trying to get them in. And then the third stage is engage or nurture, as we would call it in email marketing. And the idea of nurturing is, you might want to do a drip feed style email marketing shot and that's where workflows comes in. So to create a workflow, you'll see that you can create one from scratch, which we could do, or we can use some of the ready-made templates. Now I'm just gonna run you through some of the templates to give you a better insight into how these could be used. But as you'll see, we have that onboarding, we have that hook to get them in, we have the welcome email, and then we have a trigger and a trigger will start. In this case, the trigger is the time delay. It's to wait two days before hitting them with a newsletter and then tagged as onboarded. So now we know that we've got this client onboarded, they've signed up on our website, we've hit them with a welcome email, and we can add a tag. Tags can then be used for all types of variations. We can use tags for reporting purposes, so we can have a tag showing how many of our consumers or customers have been onboarded, how many have received the welcome offer or the welcome promotion, um, or even simply we want to retarget them later, we can specify by the tag. So these are different methods that we can do. Likewise, we can also use automation to sync or link with our integrations. So we talked before about the idea of linking with the likes of e-commerce. So if someone purchases a product on say Shopify or WooCommerce, they can be added to a particular campaign and we can link back to them to say, look, you bought this product before. What about these other products? How can we show to you add-ons and coming back to that form of recurring um, advice and recurring experience. So lots of opportunity for the likes of workflows. But if we just go back to create workflow, what you'll see we can do here is look at some of those templates and some of the templates from GetResponse are fantastic. And I, be honest, I would use these even to get started. Very rarely, if ever, would I actually start from scratch. And that's simply because, likes of AI, you have a lot of these set up that you can take and then craft it as your own. So some examples I like to look at is the welcome and lead qualifying. So if you're a business and you're asking questions, let's say your contact form asks questions like, how many employees do you have? And if they say that they only have less than 50 or less than 100 employees, you might want to put them as a slightly lower level lead. Now that just means your process is slightly different, your nurturing is slightly different versus maybe an enterprise level client who has a thousand employees, you might want to draft them a slightly different process and a slightly different workflow. So you can use lead qualification to help kind of base that on who you're going to target and how you're going to process that. 
But for now, we'll just look at the welcome emails. And you can see here, we can preview the eight steps that we have here. So this one, for example, will capture their purchase details. It will then assign a tag. It will send them a message. It'll then wait for a day. It'll send them another message and then it will check a condition. Now the condition is simply a way you can almost force a trigger or an action to happen. If they clicked on something, assign them a tag to say they're engaged and move them into this list. If they're not engaged, put them into this list and hit them later. And there's all different methods you can do. And this is where the automation then comes in to see how you obviously break that down. From really simple welcome steps that only have very two simple pieces, which is once they add to a list, immediately hit them with a message or simply nurturing them, talking them through a post process or a post service agreement. From there though, once we're happy that we find one that we like, we can click on use template. This will then start to set up the workflow and from here you'll see all of the elements. Now at an initial top level glance, this can be a little bit overwhelming as well, but I assure you that GitResponse have a fantastic interactive tutorial and that tutorial you can turn on in the top right corner and that will talk you through how to configure the actual workflow. But quite simply, it's straightforward. It is a flow diagram. So you work your way from top to bottom. The idea here is that someone will subscribe by a list by any method. So that means if they come through a website form, if they come through a social media landing page, you can obviously subscribe to the list. Once they subscribe, you're then going to create a message for them. Now, again, you can use one of your templates that you created before. So if I was to have saved and published the newsletter that we did just a moment ago, I could select that here and I could have that sent only to the one receipt each time. So it just means that they resubscribe, they're not gonna get the same email sent, the email flow again, and we can change that around. At that stage, we're then gonna wait for two days just to let it bed in, and we're gonna send them then another message, and that other message might be slightly different. That may be a promotion follow-up, it might be an engagement follow-up, and at that stage, we can assign them off as another tag to say engaged or onboarding completed. Now at this level, then you can start to use more conditions. You can start adding more things. So for example, we have the conditions that I mentioned before. So if they open the message, so you can start to drag that down, you can connect the two points. And this will effectively say the next step after sending the tag is, did they open the newsletter? Yes or no, or sorry, when they did. And if they did, you can then add in another point. So if we scroll down, you'll see here, we have the ability to send a message, push a notification, get them to uh, move to a landing page. You can use all these conditions to try and help direct or steer the workflow. And this really allows you to create that custom bespoke nurtured style email. So the example for those that are in maybe food or hospitality, if someone uh, books a reservation with yourself, you can send them an email uh, that uh, I'm sure places the menu with them before they arrive. If they open the menu, you can obviously hit them with another email that says, here's our drinks menu, and you can give them an option to pre-book on arrival. If they don't, you can hit them with another email that says something along the lines of, we'll see you on site. And then after two days, because by that stage they will have appeared and they've arrived at your restaurant, you can then hit them with follow-up for reviews or follow-up on rebooking or getting vouchers and gift cards. And this process is a great way of trying to structure the ideal workflow that meets your needs and your requirements. So I really would encourage you to have a look at the automation and if you're not already using automation within your current workflow with email marketing, something to strongly consider looking into and adding it to your platform. So real good experience behind email marketing is automation on any platform that you're using. I would really encourage you to spend a bit of time. So hopefully this demo has given you a bit of insight into get response, just enough to get you to, to try it out. Again, my main focus or takeaway from today's call is that if you're not already using email marketing, if you're not already um, experimenting with the platforms available, we would encourage you to, to get online, get into email marketing at the most entry level platform or the highest level, depending on where you're at in your experience and start to blend into the system. When it comes to AI, I for one would say GetResponse are leading the charge at the moment, but as we all know, AI is advancing very quickly and there's lots of different solutions. So one of the things that I would always encourage you to do is back to that ChatGPT and uh, and Bard and all those different AI platforms is to experiment here too and, and, and not only use GetResponse to build the email campaign, but actually use ChatGPT to help develop a strategy, uh, help develop a strategy for promoting our webinar and email marketing. And it sometimes can be as simple as just having that conversation 
with ChatGPT to say, look, what is the strategy? What's the best way to approach this in terms of an email marketing campaign? And how do I start to break down? And so this is the big thing to, to take away when it comes to how do you use AI efficiently? It's not just about one solution um, when it comes to AI. Maybe one solution when it comes to the software and the platforms you use. But when it comes to AI, it's trying to combine resources. So again, you'll see here, ChatGPT is allowing us to see what we should be thinking about. It's talking about the same steps that we mentioned already, that segmentation of the audience, the uh, webinar series. So it's going to be looking at that email nurturing. And it's then going to look at how do you strategize those emails? How do you get content into those emails that's going to really benefit the end user to encourage them to sign up, to read in, and to most importantly, to engage with the audience. So you'll get a bit of an idea on how that could be done just as a strategic point of view and how you can combine that in to your platform. So I just want to thank you for attending today. I want to thank you for attending this webinar. If you do have any questions, again, feel free to leave them in the chat below and we will be coming back to you over the chat. There has been a few questions. So just to recap over some of those today, one of the questions I received earlier was, what is the difference between GetResponse, HubSpot, uh, MailChimp, and the various other uh, providers? Well, the first thing to say is obviously, if we talk about HubSpot, first of all, HubSpot is a full stack CRM solution. So customer relationship management software. Uh, and HubSpot is naturally used almost like the uh, customer entry for all of your business. So it's going to be the phone book, so to speak, with collecting their contact information, the company, who they work for, what they do, their role in the business. It's then going to track the activity. So if you're emailing them, if you're working with them. And then it also has marketing as a bolt-on or an add-on. HubSpot are champions in most areas, but one of the things that they have is these add-ons and bundles, be it the service desk, the email marketing, or the CRM. So with HubSpot, the email marketing is that add-on. It's something to consider as an added cost. It's normally a quite an expensive add-on, so it's something to be aware of. But with HubSpot, normally I would say your difference there is it's a full stack solution in relation to a CRM. Their email marketing is fantastic. It's very similar to GetResponse. They also are working on AI quite heavily, but what I would say there, it's probably down to cost value ratio. MailChimp and GetResponse are arguably your closest. So in terms of both are dedicated email marketing providers, they are both looking at the email marketing front. What I would say with MailChimp is they're an excellent entry level product. So if you're looking at getting into email marketing, you don't currently, or, uh, you don't currently do any email marketing or you're joining this webinar today because you have done email marketing a wee bit but never really ventured into it, I'd strongly recommend maybe MailChimp is a good place to get started with. Build a base, start to get into the fundamentals. But when it comes to more advanced features, funny actually, it's quickly how MailChimp prices go up and they start to get very close to get response. Get response for everything that you get within their platform is a fantastic place to really take your email marketing to the next level. And I would say that's where they're a level up platform. They have that AI uh, resource built in, list segmentations, audience profiles are much more ver ver versatile and flexible versus something like MailChimp. So MailChimp would be kind of your entry level. Get response just goes up a wee bit more. And then HubSpot, as I said, fantastic platform if you're looking for the all-in-one, but the cost consideration just is something you need to be careful of there in combining those platforms. Now, again, you just need to keep that in mind. But yeah, another excellent question there. Um, do, again, keep your comments coming in. If there's anything there at all, we'll jump on that. Likewise, you can also match us up directly on our social channels. So if you just stay tuned with Profile Tree, especially on the likes of LinkedIn, or you're also welcome to connect with us on our website, so don't be afraid to reach out there too. I really do appreciate you attending today and I want to thank you again uh, for your engagement. If there is any other further questions, do drop them below or connect with me and we will stay on for just a few more minutes before closing off. And thanks again.